All right, let's see if we can get a little bit of this done before we have to turn that fan on. Uh, doing this 4T65E HD. Uh, doing an LS kit with, kit with clutches. Adding in the second gear steel like I do on all of them. The uh, third gear steel. Uh, one, two, two, three accumulators. The bushing and uh, input drum. Pistons, filter, KO98 kit, KT4T65E kit, the Sonex uh, pin for the servo, 84571-01K. I've started using that, that's working really well. Uh, channel plate sleeve, what else? Chain. I know I'm forgetting some stuff. Anyway, we get going on this one. One of the things that I wanted to show you on this, you might think that this is bad, but this is the way that they're made. All the planets and the differential, if you look at them, they look like they're kind of burnt. And that's not burned. That's uh, coating or heat treated. Uh, so don't think that that is bad. That is the way it's supposed to look. That's one of the differences on the HD unit. Uh, also the HD unit is different right here. Instead of having a bushing here we got a bearing and some of the other differences let's see I guess I can't think of any right off the top of my head they're also putting in a bushing for the stator because this channel plate sleeve got worn that bushing supports that shaft. So I have already uh, put my new rings on, and I I got a new stator. I'm oh, not a new stator, but I got a stator. These have been sitting on here overnight, so that they'll be nice and resized. I won't have to fight them. Okay, I guess uh, let's get going on this thing. I guess we can talk about this on the Sprague assembly. We got diode Sprags. That come in this unit. You can go either direction you want. This is the early style where these are made together and it has a sleeve that goes on the sun gear you can use this but the clutches are different you have to change clutches out if you want to go to the diode sprag take that sleeve off and you just slide it onto the sun gear it will fit <clears throat> you can go either direction you want to go you just have to change the clutches that match the sprag because they are different all right we shall get started I guess I've already put the kit in the valve body um, I think that's the only kit I put in so far I'm trying to remember where I'm at trying to keep up with where you are when this part situation is the way that it is it can be a challenge as you forget what you have and haven't done alright now come on get in there you fighting me on this
Down inside this drum here, and there's a lip seal and an O-ring. Make sure it's this check ball that's down inside of here. It's nice and free. still to be facing down. Get the hook of your scribe up underneath the lip of that. Make sure it's not rolled anywhere. Two O rings in your kit. <clears throat> One is smaller than the other. The smaller one goes in here, the larger one goes. On this accumulator right here. the o-ring in the bottom groove the top groove is for the snap ring get some lube and lube all that up I use trans gel gold to lube up everything I use Dr. Trini green trans gel makes a green also I use the green to hold bearings and uh, washers and stuff like that in place. You want your lip of your lip seal to face up towards you. Move all that up. twist it down into position. You're going to line that up so that four teeth are open. You'll see when you get your steels down in there you want kind of a equidistance away from your steel so it doesn't bind. We have our return spring and our, our upper and piston retainer. There's a check ball in that, make sure it's free also. You look at the tip of your snap ring, you'll see that there's a taper to it. You want the short end of the taper up towards you. Now, Transgo makes a kit for this unit, and the only thing I like about that kit is the seal that they give you for right here. You can see how small that lip is, and they give you a different shape uh, seal for here, and it's got an expander that goes behind it. I like that a lot, but I don't like the kit. I'd rather put a superior kit in. Uh, so I don't bother with, I'm not going to buy a whole kit just for a lip seal. So here again you want to get the lip of 
and uh, scrap up under the lip of your lip seal. Make sure it's not rolled. Always uh, replace the pistons in this transmission. The second gear one is super horrible. Uh, it'll feel somewhat okay, but once it heats up, it will not seal properly. So this is one of the units that uh, always get new pistons. this side of our retain our return spring to go down short end of the taper up again all right I take one of these clutches here I keep all the old ones and I buff the clutch lining off with the scotch bright pad and angle grinder and um, comes out like this and I put one of those in here and I'll show you why. Here's your cushion plate that normally goes down. Start with an outside teeth and alternate inside outside. This unit has excessive clearance right from the factory and it doesn't take much where for it to give you a 1811 code. And a snap ring that goes down here. And you see how much play is right there. going to do is you can take a cushion plate, put it down, take that steel that we buffed off, put it down, and then start with your stack up. come out and that's perfect. Alright, then we got steel with the step. It's going to face down. Cushion plate. Steel. You can see the cutouts here. We're going to keep those all together. These are the clutches you're going to need to change. And 30 and 32 teeth if I remember correctly. on top, the kind of rounded side facing down, snap ring on top, this bearing with the lip is going to pop into place down here. Selective washer and her bearing going on top. I got to change that bushing out. All about that. Yes, yeah, the bushing gets worn. It's going to leak out your driver's side axle seal all the time. And the ones that have a bushing in here, if this bushing gets worn, your passenger axle is going to leak all the time. You're not going to 
make it quit leaking. If it's leaking on you, you might as well change it bushing. Because it's not going to quit leaking unless the axle's just bad. two different ceiling rings that go on here. Ones that take the expanders and one that don't. Just find the ones that fit into your groove. And those are the ones that you're going to use. We got tabs that have to line up in here. And the ceiling ring goes together like so. Here we got a lip seal, lip down. Alright, let me go press this bushing in. Turn our shaft in it, make sure we're okay. Yeah, my tool for this, for the resizer, tends to make them too small. I don't know. You'd think it would be the other way around after using it for so much. So, I don't uh, resize it on here. I will initially do it, but I use my support to resize it.
so I'll initially put this down get them into somewhat kind of shape immediately pull it back off and put my support let it resize to the support alright we've already put this lip seal in I have to turn the fan on. Alright, lip seal facing up towards us. We're going to put this right here, that area right there. Lip seal tool is just a snap on drawer lock or drawer slide tool. I, don't know why I always wanted to call it a drawer lock tool. A return spring, snap ring with the short end of the taper up. Oh, get my finger down. Here we go. All right, make sure that the snap rings all the way up into the groove. And we'll kick start the fan. Four accumulator. Of course, we already got the O ring on it. Got inner and outer spring. Always check your pin on your accumulator. This is the 2 3 and the 1 2 accumulators. You can see how worn out they were. Usually, all three of these are that worn, but on um, this one, this one was okay this time. I always replace the pins when I replace the accumulators. Wrong one. You got three accumulator uh, seals. They're all they all look like this. Two of them are a little bit larger. One has that green on or a yellow, or whatever color. I guess it's kind of a greenish yellow. It's the one that's smaller and it's the one that goes on here. This goes on here. This pops in the back side. You can put grease on that if you want to. Pin goes in the front side. I've already pressed this in. There's a hole in here. need to make sure that that hole lines up with the hole in the case. There's also a step notch in it. You need to make sure that that's lined up. Now you need to make sure that when you do that, that this is flat right here. You also need to make sure that it didn't leave a burr right here. If you go and you go to bolt your you bolt everything down and your pump shaft turns but your turbine shaft doesn't then you probably have a burr right here 
and it's pushing up on the valve body. If you bolt everything down, turbine shaft turns, but pump shaft doesn't. Actually, I got that backwards. If the turbine shaft turns and the pump shaft doesn't, you got a burr right here and it's pushing up and it's pushing on the pump. So that's where your problem is at for that. If you turn your pump shaft and you can't turn your turbine shaft, then the problem is uh, in this bearing right here. This bearing has come up. I, I'm glad I started talking about it because I need to make sure that it's down. Uh, just need to find a punch. If you forget to do this, it ain't no big deal. Once you get it all together and you get your sprocket on there and you get your fourth gear shaft in here, if it's sitting up too high, you can get a punch. You don't have to take everything back apart. You can get a punch in here. Usually you have to go down in here, but you can't get to here. And just give it a, a wrap right there right there and usually it frees it right up I've had a lot of questions about that also had a lot of questions about the HD unit that's why I'm doing a video on it finally got one in here I don't know why I'm trying to take that off right now don't need to do that getting where I'm at Yeah, we've done all that. I'm going to take this valve out right here. We'll get our KO98 kit. In it, you're going to get a cup plug, a spring, and a valve. You're going to take the cup plug, put a little grease on here, set your cup plug on it. that in there you can drive that valve in until that cup plug is sitting right at the base of that right there this valve and throw it away now if it will come out come on now show up on there just take it put your valve in put your spring in and your retainer make sure it springs pretty much centered in the bore We 
have a three tab washer goes here. Three tab washer goes here. Alright, our accumulators, they are different. You need to make sure that they get back in the right spot. They do have this retainer that helps it keep the upper spring onto the accumulator. It kind of grabs a hold of it. I found that on the new accumulators it doesn't always do that, but you do need to put that back on there. Put the correct spring in the correct spot. I always mark mine which one came out of where. And I marked a new one so that if I ever take it apart again, I know that uh, that one goes there. And all these are different for all the different models. So just because I give you the spring dimensions on this one does not mean that's what they're going to be for the one that you've got. This one sits on there any better, a little bit. The factory ones you're going to have to uh, pry it off of there. And I found the best way to get that retainer off is to get as low down in there as you can. Because if you come up here and you try to pry off, it'll just pull the spring off of that retainer. So get as low as you can and that'll help you get it off of there. Alright, you got some uh, bolts for this that have short heads. You notice how much wider this is. The short ones go on here. Just leave this loose. Wrong hole. You want the curved end, short end, closest to the curve in here. And then this is going to go on here. And our reverse servo. The blue O-ring goes on here. You want the lips on these to be pretty wide. You don't want the narrow ones if they give them to you in the kit. Alright, this cover here takes a square cut seal that goes on the outside.
have this seal lip facing up towards you. Pull this filter out. This fits really loose, so don't worry about it. goes on the outside our pin goes in the inner spring actually the washer goes down first inner spring outer spring what did I do with my e-clip there it is servo on top. You can lube all that up if you want to. Trust me, it don't make a difference. Make sure your e-clip's on. Oh, reverse servo. Okay. We're going to change this out. This pin. Sonic's come out with this new pin. It's supposed to help keep that band from breaking. You're going to get a pin. You're going to get these two uh, sealing rings. The pin's slightly longer. You want your washer on here. Your return spring. That's all going to go on here. Your e clip's going to go on top. See if I can do this on camera. It's easier to have it it's some place where you can I'm gonna have to take this over here. Gonna have something holding that for you. You want another wide lip on this? I don't know what that was. Hopefully, it wasn't important. Make sure that lip's not rolled. Put a little grease on these. Lip seals are scarf cut, so they're going to go, or ceiling rings are scarf cut, so they go like that. Kind of start it at an angle and roll it in there. Just make sure that you don't roll the lip. And don't throw your spring away. Check ball in here, make sure it's nice and free.
turn spring, short end of the taper up. Now the teeth on this drum and the teeth here where they mate. The early ones were 25 degree splines and they were really bad about wearing and wearing the lugs out on here and on here. The updated is uh, 10 degree and I recommend you put that in there uh, especially if it's a heavy duty unit or you're going to be putting a lot of torque on that because it will screw them up if you can possibly do it. Alright, you got your cushion plate got your bottom pressure plate. Usually it says down on it. I don't see the word on this one. If you want the shinier side up. You got your extra steel you're going to put in. doesn't matter where you put it in in there. Just don't put it underneath one of them. Either on top of a pressure plate or underneath one because the thickness can take more heat and that's why it's that thick. If you put that down there, it's not gonna be able to take the heat as much. Top pressure plate, that bevel faces up. And our snickering. That should have made our clearance come out really nice. That looks good. We'll put that shell on top of there. It's going to sit down there. Put this bearing going to face down. This top hat washer goes there. This planet. This bearing is going to face this way up. So on your drum. This sprag and bearing usually stays in there. I just leave it in there. It's going to sit on top of there. Our sprags. has a blind spline so it'll only line up one way. And hold your sun gear. We're turning clockwise, locking counterclockwise, turning counterclockwise, locking clockwise. Make sure, you know, do that several times and be kind of aggressive with it when you lock it because if it's bad, when you get aggressive with it, it'll start to spin. different designs here. One takes the bearing that sits on the back of the support. The other one takes the bearing that goes on the park gear itself. And this is going to sit. Make sure I've got this right. It goes in this way. And our sun gear is going to sit at this end facing in. Depending on what ratio you got is which way the angle of the uh, pinions are facing and it might, this bearing might fall out. We got a selective washer for our end play here and this bearing. 
gonna sit right there on top. Our pump shaft has a scarf cut and it's gonna sit just like that. on your rotor these little pins are kind of riveted brazed in I guess I don't know how they got them in there but they do have a tendency to come loose and if this comes loose it can give you a rattling noise while it's idling so make sure those are tight uh, we've already got our ceiling rings resized on here I'm gonna leave this on here until we're ready to put it in. We've got our double chain. The blue links are gonna face up. Let me get my fourth gear steels over here. I believe we're ready to go in the case, so let me change uh, camera angles and battery, and we'll be back. All right. You don't need to take it all the way apart. Drive the pins, this pin, this pin down far enough to get the cover off. Got an O-ring that goes here. There is a rubber in here and a wiper. I never changed those anyway. That metal ring goes on top. Got a guide ring that goes in the bottom. Bearing side faces down. Put your veins, you can see where the uh, guides were riding. Let's put those back the same way they came out. Some of these had a filter It goes in this spot right here. Looks just like that. Pops in from the back side. You can put it in, you can leave it out. It doesn't really matter. So, let me go press this back together and we'll put this on the unit. Okay, always pull this linkage out and take a look at the end of it. These like to mushroom off. You got to put this in before you put anything else in. Come on, baby, get in there. This little nail goes in here, holds it in place. No need to drive it in too far. All it does is make it harder to get out. Oh, forgot, I haven't got my forward band yet. This uh, bearing, some of these have a washer here. They say the update is to put a bearing in it. So it goes this way up. Let me go see if I got a band. All right, this is our anchor side. This is our pin side. Camera's kind of right in my way. Two one band anchor. Just 
Okay. Um, plant it with our bearing on the back. Plant it with our bearing in the uh, thrust washer or plastic washer. Our shell. Our sprag assemblies. I make a tool that you can drop all this in there at one time. I got it. I just uh, find it easier to do it this way. Drop our drum in, make sure the bearing's on the back side. Come on, we got a little bit to go. Nope, oh, nope, it's down. Alright, reverse band. Anchor. Our drum. Our support. This end is going to face right over in here. Be careful when you're putting this down that you don't break those rings. Don't go just beating it in there. When it's down all the way, it's going to have a recess. When you put your diff in, it's going to push it back up. We got our oil dam. This little deal's got fit right there. And you got to line it up. There. Three tab washer. And a three tab washer, it goes in here. We got ones that have long tabs and short tabs. See how far up it's sticking. If you got the long tabs, you gotta make sure that your rotor fits properly on here. As if it doesn't, you're gonna have to grind those tabs down. Blue links up. Four tab washer. Our rotor, don't never forget that. Our fourth gear shaft. Got the pressure plate. It usually says down on it. This one does not. These two tabs are going to sit in here. This half moon has to line up with that boss right there. And some of these steels don't have that boss there. They got the big tab right there. Alright. Dowel pins go here. Make sure we're getting most all of this. There and there. 
Make sure you got metal gaskets. I think all the kits come with them now. Paper ones were bad about blowing out. There. This is the way I do it. I find it easiest for me. I leave my linkage hooked up. I leave my detent on. I just hook this into here. You gotta make sure that this roller goes inside of there. These two tins here and here. You got the 30 Torx goes down here. Got another tin that goes over here. You got the big headed eights go here, here, and here. And I forgot I had to chisel these bolts out, so I'm gonna have to go find some bolts for that. down pin that goes there it's hollow got our oil dam goes here we got four quarter inch check balls one goes there 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 and there And turn our turbine shaft, make sure it turns. And it does, we're good. We got our check balls, six of them. Large ones here, small, 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 small. If you're putting the uh, Sonics kit in. There's the holes that you drill, sizes that you drill them. These little keepers hold your separator plate on. You don't have to have these. Two thirty torques. Yeah, 
got our pressure switch manifold. The early ones had more pressure switches than that. The late ones only had one. It's like four or five wires, I think, going to it. I'll have the wiring harnesses at the end of it. Eight millimeter holds that in. E4 bolt. Thirteen millimeter, the large threads. Alright, you got 10 millimeters that are 2 inch 38, 380. And go here, here. There. In there, you got three that are two inch 781. You got two eight millimeters that are two inch 608. Uh, last of the big headed eight millimeters goes down here. Alright, I forgot all about the pump. We're gonna have to go get it ready. Put our filter tube boot on the side over here. Put our axle seal in. All right, we have to get the pump ready. I'm gonna go find those bolts, and then we'll be back. All right, put her pump on. You got two 13s with the small shank, so go up here. And this 
little clip goes right there. The 10 millimeters long ones all go on the pump. Eight millimeter goes right here. Kind of line your pump up with the casting right there. Okay, there are several different wiring harnesses depending on what year it is and if you got an internal mode switch, if you got more than one pressure switch, so they're all different. You know, I'm going to be swapping them out and putting the wrong thing in. If your connector clips are broken, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I ain't never had one that came out. All right, looking good there. We got our molded gasket. Put you a little bit of grease in that groove hold your seal in place now this is usually the case it's not always the case usually a stud goes here here and one goes here and here These 13s go everywhere else, except for at the very bottom. And that's where the 40 torques go. These 40 torques go at the very bottom. This one here and the one over here and this side is your lineup bolts tighten on first.
Let's see if we can get this finished up before I go to lunch. These three eighths hold the forward servo in. If need be, when you tighten the servo up and it's pushing on the band and keeping it applied, you can grind down on that pin. So far I have not had to do that, but this one I might have to. It's looking pretty tight. Put this servo in with your filter facing over here. Got this rubber seal that goes in right here. Put your tube in. Now they make a keeper to keep this tube up inside there. I don't know if it's the way that I put them on but I've never had one come off. We got these three tins that go down here. And these short shouldered eights hold this in. thermal valve is in there. We got the filter seal. And I don't think I'm gonna make it before my lunch. I got somewhere I gotta be a certain time so it doesn't look like I'm gonna make it. Ten millimeters on the pan.
looks like I'm, all I'm gonna get to do is tighten this pan down. And we have to continue after lunch. anyway is it's gonna recompress the bolts are probably gonna loosen up I guess I should check my pump shaft and make sure it turned I know the turbine shaft does. Yeah, we're good. Alright, we'll continue after lunch. Okay, so like I said, there's two different styles. There's one that the bearing goes on the back here, and there's one that the bearing goes on the uh, park gear right here. Put our shaft in. Put the bearing side down. Put this recess side down. Put your differential in. And actually, you have to lay this back on its side because we've got to put the shaft through it. So you're not going to be able to see this. And the clip goes on the end of the shaft here. And then we're going to pop that shaft into the spider gear. So ring that goes on the housing. Thirteen millimeters that hold that on.
All right, I don't have what to do with the hammer. Hammer, hammer. I don't have the correct seal installer for this, so I just got a bearing race into fits around. And I use a bushing driver to drive that in. strip adhesive and I put that on my front seals you don't need much just a little bead no I don't know where I got the seal installers it is an awesome set of seal installers I've looked everywhere I've asked all my tool truck guys I think I bought it off the tool truck but nobody knows anything about this and there's no name on it no number on it and I've looked and looked and I cannot find it anywhere all right so got our lock up o-ring that goes on here and a little bit of lube on your cooler lines they are dead one the one is the hardest to get to if you got a scribe that's got a little kind of a little bend on it it helps you get in there get that o-ring out Get your new o-ring kind of started in at an angle and when I was much skinnier my fingers weren't so fat and it would fit right down inside there and push that o-ring right inside there Just kind of work it in. Here we go. And we need to clip. I guess all we got left is a linkage seal and a reverse servo. It's the same installer for all your GM lever seals. You're going to have to look down inside here, make sure that your band is lined up in the groove. Because if you don't, you're going to miss it. Put your servo in. Lube up the o ring. <clears throat> I 
All right. We are done with this unit.